I have a problem. Yes, a problem most people don't have. But yet, a problem I want more people to have. I care. I care for people everywhere. People well outside my social circle. People everywhere. Where did it come from? I actually don't know. Was it watching the famine in Ethiopia in the 80s on the BBC? Maybe, but I think that was it, just manifesting. Why am I so different? Well, actually, I'm not. People have a filter, a mechanism to repress those powerful images. My filter mustn't be as good as most. A filter that, on rare occasions, like when we all saw the image of the boy washed up on the coast in Greece, that suddenly falls away. So in response to this, at the age of 24, unlike most of my peers who were going off to Australia, I set off for a country that I'd never heard of before called Tanzania to volunteer for two years. And it was the happiest two years of my life. I'll save you watching a lot of TED Talks about what is happiness. Happiness is when your thoughts, words and actions are in harmony. And for the first time in my life, they were all in harmony and I loved it. Of course, the two years went quick and I came back to Ireland and got a job in the commercial world. And after a few years, I realized I'm back out of alignment. And I was afforded the opportunity to run a wonderful charity called Kamara Education for the last eight years, where I got that, that harmony well and truly back. And then two years ago, for the first time ever, I witnessed somebody die right in front of my eyes. The tragedy was that it was my wife of 10 years who had a long battle with cancer. And I'd witness her say goodbye to not just me, but to our two, two children who were aged four and six at the time. So if I wasn't motivated by caring for people everywhere before then, I certainly was now. So let me tell you a little bit about the business of caring for people. In 2015, the world got together and agreed 17 goals. These goals are things like to eradicate poverty, quality health care, quality education, housing, etc. And we have to achieve them by 2030. Now, I, I love these goals. Um, I love them because they're global and they apply to people here in Ireland as much as they do somebody in Zambia. And as you all know, we still have quite a bit to go in Ireland to achieving these goals. The other reason why I love these global goals is because once upon a time, Africa's problems were just that. They were Africa's. They were out there. However, as we've seen with the migration crisis and security issues in Europe, they're no longer their problems. There are problems. Interconnected world we live in, and these are global solutions for global challenges. Now, the easy part, of course, is coming together and agreeing these 17 goals. The hard part is actually making them, making them real, making them happen. And there are three players in that uh, that do actually the work to make these happen. The first is government, the second is charity, and the third is a relative newcomer. It's business. So today, our government, on our behalf, gives 30 cent in every 100 euro that we have in this country to achieving these goals internationally. Pretty, pretty meager uh, part of our budget. And it's especially disappointing given several years ago, we committed to 70 cents in every 100 euro. Our nearest neighbors in the UK have actually legislated for 70 cents. So no politician can come along at a whim and drop this commitment. So I need you to talk to your politicians and to tell them that this actually matters. It matters more than ever before. The second is charity. And charity today, charities everywhere are doing amazing work. I had the experience of it firsthand, as I say, in Kamara, where we were working towards goal number four, quality education. Now, in recent years, there have been a number of charity scandals in Ireland and the UK. And I really implore you not to believe that these are representative of all charities, because they're not. 
These are some isolated examples. So I need you to give to charity and give more than ever before. The third audience is business. Now, businesses typically today, they write a check every year, maybe for the local charity. They might let their staff volunteer for a day every year. Great, I hear you say. Well, actually, no, it's not great. Given the resources that are at their disposal, it's actually pretty woeful. And I think I understand why that is the case. And that is because there are two myths that are present today that I want to burst now. The first myth is that social good and profit are incompatible. So if you look at this simplistically and you think, yeah, the bigger the check I write to charity, yes, the lower the profits. That is true in the short term. But in the medium and long term, the companies that have social good at their core will have the best employees and will see customers migrate to them over time. Let me give you an example. So the company called Unilever, that I think we all know because we have their products in our houses. So 10 years ago, Unilever put in place a new CEO called Paul Polman. And he said, if the company did not put social good at their core, they were dead. So today, and they're still on their journey, everything they do in Unilever, they look through the lens of social good. And the results are staggering. Over 90% of Unilever staff are not just happy to work in the organization, they're proud to work for Unilever. The value of the company has exploded from 40 billion to 160 billion. So it's very clear from this example that actually business doing good is good for business. The second myth is that philanthropy, the art of giving, is the same as altruism, the art of caring for people unconnected to us. Now, of course, philanthropy is part of altruism. However, it's not the same, and it's not the total part of altruism. Because every day, as individuals and businesses, we have decisions that we make, pretty simple decisions in a lot of cases, which can actually go towards uh, achieving these goals. Decisions in business, like if we're looking at multiple suppliers, which to pick, who are we looking at? Who is the most ethical provider out there? Should we choose a renewable energy provider or a traditional energy provider for, for our manufacturing plants? These decisions are, 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 are pretty simple decisions, um, but yet we overlook the responsible decision a lot of the time, even though the cost is negligible. Let me give you an example again of, of this. So Airbnb, the accommodation provider, recently announced that they're opening up their portal around humanitarian crises for free so people in those communities can give accommodation to both the humanitarian workers and the survivors. So here was a decision they made. It cost them pretty well much nothing, and yet it had a huge contribution towards a humanitar humanitarian crises. So not all decisions cost money. So there are the two myths that I want to I wanna explode. Now, if you don't uh, believe me so far, I'll, I'll bring in the data side. And the data is pretty conclusive too, because the Boston Consulting Group a couple of years ago looked at, that, looked at this in depth. And what they found is companies with social good at their core can achieve profits that are 4% greater than their peers and valuations that are 11% greater than their peers. So it's, it's, it's pretty clear that this stuff is, works. And here's the best part. We all think of business as they're out there somewhere, right? But actually, businesses are set up, they're run, they're managed, and they serve people, people like us. And people, when they strip away that filter, actually care too. So we actually have a lot more control, and we have a lot more influence than we think on, on, on businesses. Now, you're probably at the point where you're thinking, yeah, but we've given money to Africa for decades, and it's gone down to Swanee, and there's been scandals, and it's wasted, and we should stop doing that stuff. Again, we, we need to look beyond the media headlines. So the World Bank said between the years of 1990 and 2010, the number of people in the world in extreme poverty halved. So in, in a short 20, year, 20 years, 650 million men, women, and children 
were lifted out of poverty. And this trend has only continued since 2010. So this stuff works. So going back to Gandhi, if my thoughts are similar to your thoughts now, if my words have resonated, then it's time for you to join me in action. I want you to help me lobby the government. I want you to give what you can to charity. And most importantly, I want you to affect change in business. Because when we hit these goals, and we will hit these goals, and hopefully long before 2030, for the first time in our existence, we won't need to deny ourselves the truth, and we won't need a filter. Thank you.